Now I like to think of this channel as being for normal guys with normal budgets who drive normal cars. And right behind me here, I've got two normal cars. This is a Porsche 911 997 Carrera 4S, the four wheel drive. This is a 997 Carrera S, the two wheel drive, a rear wheel drive. Now this has probably been done to death. There are so many reviews for the S versus the 4S online. You could probably sit and binge watch a whole day's worth if you wanted. But seeing as I've got the two cars here, well, I'm gonna give it a try. So both of these cars are first generation, that's 997.1. This one is a Tiptronic, this one is a manual. Obviously this is a four wheel drive, this is a two wheel rear wheel drive. So first of all, we're gonna look at the differences in the garage, then we'll take them both out for a drive. So looking at the two cars from the rear, the difference between the two is 44 millimeters. So the, the 4S, the yellow car, is 44 millimeters wider. Looking at them side by side though, it looks like a hell of a lot more. And you know what, I think when you see them side by side, the S does look quite slim, but when you see it out on the road, it does actually look quite wide. So with regards to the weight, the yellow 4S weighs 1,475 kilograms. The blue S weighs 1,460 kilograms. So the S is 15 kilograms lighter than the 4S. So when it comes to the power and the engines in these cars, they both have the same engine because they're both S models. So they have a 355 brake horsepower, 3.8 litre flat six engine. Not to 60 times, they do differ by a couple of point zeros of a second, uh, simply because that's a Tiptronic, that's a manual, that's a little bit heavier, that's a little bit lighter. And if both of these cars were on the same track with the same driver, Driving it in one car, then driving it in the other car, you would expect the 4S to be a little bit slower because it is that little bit heavier. Unless, of course, the track was covered in snow, which would make great viewing, in fact. But I don't have that. All right, enough chit-chat. It's time to go and abuse these cars. No, not in a sexual way. So right now I'm driving the Riviera Blue Carrera S. It's a rear wheel drive. And you know, I've been driving Carrera 4S's now for quite a few years, and I can already feel that the S version, the front is a lot lighter when I'm putting it around corners. You know, it's a lot more jittery and there's a lot more movement when I put my foot down into those corners. And it also has the tendency to kick the back end out a lot easier, making your decision making and thought process needing to come into play well a lot quicker, really. The Carrera S, the rear wheel drive, absolutely 100% came here to dance. Oh, mate. Oh, mate. That is edgy, that's edgy. I like that, oh, it gets the heart going. Now the 4S on the other hand, allows you to really plant the wheels into those corners without ever feeling that you're gonna end up in a bush. Again, no, not in a sexual way. It always just feels really, really super planted. That's not to say though, that you couldn't kick the back end out if you really wanted to. You just need to be a little bit more aggressive. It's planted, just planted. managed to kick it out a little bit but I had to try a lot harder a lot harder the 4s just doesn't really seem to be in the mood for dancing as much and what about the extra weight of the 4s I think it's about 15 kilograms lighter which is not a great deal to me it seems like a little bit of overkill to worry about that kind of weight unless you're really sort of on the track doing competitions are you really gonna notice it on the country roads or the open twisty roads maybe maybe not I think it only really matters if most of your driving in this car is going to be on track and yeah you probably would notice the weight but you can still have an incredible amount of fun on the track and on your twisty roads in the forest that's for sure 
the S model is certainly more playful and I guess that would have to increase your concentration levels and I guess you've got to have pretty big balls to drive this car on a spirited run in the wet full send but that doesn't mean you can't have fun on these country roads in the dry oh. Oh, you can feel that front end bouncing up and down. It's terrific, actually. I love it. <laughs> so one of the smaller differences, and it's not really about the way the car drives, is that when I'm driving the S, I think I feel a lot more road noise, and you can hear a lot more uh, road noise, stone chips coming up and hitting the car, despite this car being actually higher from the ground. So I'm not sure if that's just a characteristic of the, uh, the four-wheel drive. You've got more protection under there, but you certainly feel and hear a lot more road noise in the S. Without question, though, the best place for this car is the track. I wish I had one to hand, I really, really do. But for now, I'm just gonna have to make do with the good old British country roads. to preference my preference will be completely different to the next guy's preference so the very fact that Porsche have made so many variations of these cars speaks volumes for me though I think the extra weight is not really a problem you know I can live with the extra weight and the planted feel of the car but I do concede that the S gives a more light engaging experience which is probably the way Porsche designed these cars to be and as I only do a few track days per year in this car well the looks of the car, the wide body just gets me every time. But I do think though that if I was to get another 911 and my next 911 will definitely be an S, the rear wheel, two wheel drive. And I think that would be the car that I would use on track days. A few other things to consider, location is a big factor. You know, if you live in a climate where there's lots of snow, the roads are always icy, then the 4S will come into its own. It'll be perfect for those roads. And when it comes to MPG, yeah, the 4S is gonna be worse off, it's heavier, four-wheel drive but seriously I'm not even gonna have that conversation but knowing what I know about these cars though whether you choose a Tiptronic a manual a four-wheel drive a two-wheel drive you seriously need a sports exhaust either the factory sports exhaust or the gundo hack or something similar the problem with these cars is the factory standard exhaust is just really really underwhelming and sure one thing that you guys are probably all thinking is yeah you should have had two manuals which I agree but I didn't have two manuals to hand. I had to work with what I've got and I've learned a lot with what I've got. So in summary, they are both terrific cars. Either way, they're both gonna put a smile on your face. Some people will buy the wide body car for purely the looks. Some people will buy the S purely for the playfulness of the car. There are so many types of owners that are looking for a car that suits their personality, driving style, etc. And either way, you're gonna have a massive smile on your face no matter which car you buy. You know, ultimately, it's about finding a car which suits your personality, which suits your driving style. And there's no right or wrong answer, so long as it's a Porsche. So coming up soon on the channel, I'll be doing a 986 7 Cayman versus a 997 comparison. They're both 2006 cars, so it'll be quite an interesting video uh, to see how they both fare and shoot off against each other. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss a single thing. You can also follow the Porsche Network on Instagram and on Facebook. I'll see you real soon on the next episode.